Good morning, everyone. Is that too loud? No. Okay. My name is Kevin Bowmiller, and I am very privileged to be the veteran service officer here in the town of Reading. Welcome to our Veterans Day ceremony. I ask you now to please stand if you are able. The Reading Memorial High School Band Ensemble will now perform the National Anthem. Reading Girl Scouts will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. And I welcome Father Patrick Armano from Austin Prep and the U.S. Navy veteran for an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, today we gather to honor our veterans, worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country. We pray that you will bless them for their unselfish service in the continual struggle to preserve our freedoms, our safety, and our country's heritage. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made, and for the many contributions that they made to our country. Grant us all gathered here today the gift of gratitude and reverence for those who have offered their very lives for our good through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father Patrick. Please be seated. And before we continue, uh, there's a few Marines here, so happy 244th birthday. Woo! Again, thank you for all coming outside on this. Uh, it's not a bright day, but it's, uh, it's dry. So again, it's great to see everyone. Today, we mark the 101st anniversary of the end of World War I. This was the beginning of what has become our Veterans Day. A day to celebrate, honor, and thank America's soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guard, and merchant sailors who have bravely answered the call to defend our freedom. On the flagpole, uh, there's a plaque that was de dedicated November 11th, 1946, in memory of 26 Reading veterans who made the supreme sacrifice in World War II. Today, we are dedicating this plaque in front of me in honored memory of 27 additional Reading veterans who have also made the supreme sacrifice so that we may live in freedom. From World War I 
William Bretain, Jr. Carl L. Coombs Timothy Cummings Clarence Eaton Edward Haynes C.G. Hartshorn Stanward Hill Ernest Leach Thomas Muse Ralph Morey William Riley Edward Walsh William White and additional members from World War II, Warren Goodwin, Leonard Muse, Charles Ogden, Richard Smith, F. Wilmer Young. From the Korean War, Lawrence L. Doucette. From Vietnam, Peter M. Bradbury, Robert J. Kroos, John W. Hanscom, Michael D. Havel, Robert A. Holt, Bruce C. Parmalee, Edward A. Putney, and from the Persian Gulf War, William R. Hansen. We can now pay our respects on the on common ground to all those who have gone before us in service to our country. And now I invite Tommy Well from Scout Troop 702 who will read the Veterans Day Proclamation from Governor Baker. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And, whereas on November 11th, 1918, the armistice was signed in the Forest of Compiègne by the Allied nations in Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars, after four years of conflict. And whereas, since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas, there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts. And whereas today, we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country. And whereas, we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. And whereas, it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder to, of the cost of our freedom. And whereas, in November 2019, the world will commemorate the 101st anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 o'clock a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2019 to be Veterans Day, and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Signed by His Excellency, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth. Thank you, Tommy. I'd now like to continue a tradition uh, of recognizing the heroes in our neighborhood. These are men, our neighbors. They went off around the world to protect our freedoms. And we're fortunate enough to return to enjoy these freedoms. They returned and worked in the finance industry, hardware business, as a certified public accountant, and working with Redding's finest public work department. For many years, I wanted to recognize a local World War II veteran who served in the Army Air Force with the first B-29 bomb wing. He flew 33 missions as a remote central fire control gunner over China, Burma, Japan, and India, where he crashed, where he survived a crash landing. He was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation, the Distinguished Flying Cross, and the Air Medal with five oak leaf clusters. To no surprise, Nelson Burbank wanted no part of this, this public celebration. We all know some of what Nelson did for our town, but we will never know all that Nelson so generously did for the town of Reading, different organizations, and for so many individuals. Well, he could not say no to me this year, so Nelson, 
Thank you for your great generosity and for your service. And I welcome Sergeant Bud Lamp, Fred Bud Lampson, United States Marine Corps, 1951 through 1954. He's a 1950 graduate of Malden High School. While the Battle of Chosen Reservoir in Korea was raging, Bud enlisted in the Marines in January of 1951. By June, he was in Paris Island, South Carolina, assigned as a voice radio operator in an, artiller, in, in an artillery regiment. Anxious and ready to deploy to war in Korea, his staff sergeant, a crusty World War II veteran, was also from Massachusetts. He had a different idea. He told Bud, you don't want to go there. So Bud stayed stateside until the end of the war. So even in the Marines, there are angels. But Bud returned to Malden and started one of the true, most successful true value hardware stores in the franchise, which he ran for over 41 years. Bud, we thank that crusty World War II sergeant, and we thank you for your service. Welcome home. Now, Captain Jim Moran, United States Marine Corps. 1964-1968. Jim graduated from Northeastern University and received his commission through Officer Candidate School. Assigned to Marine Air Support Squadron 2 for the 3rd Marine Division, he operated out of the base in Chu Lai, Vietnam, where he deployed to Khe Sanh and Dong Ha, where he was tasked as a direct air support officer. Additional assignments included Cherry Point, North Carolina, and Pensacola, Florida. After returning home, Jim had a long career as a certified public accountant. A 50-year resident of Reading, Jim, welcome home, and thank you for your service. And I'd like to present Jim with a, a Vietnam War 50th commemoration pin. Welcome Corporal Eric Gazaloka, United States Marine Corps, 2004 to 2008. Eric is a 2002 graduate of Reading Memorial High School. He was assigned to the 1st Battalion, 10th Marine Artillery Unit, responsible for convoy security. His deployments included Djibouti, located in the Horn of Africa from 2006 to 2007, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, and from 2007 to 2008 in Anbar Province, Iraq. Today, Eric is an outstanding employee with Reading Public Works Department. Eric, welcome home and thank you for your service. There are so many other heroes among us today that have displayed the same commitment, courage, and service during war and peacetime. Today, I salute all of you, thank you for your service, and welcome home. Unfortunately, John Halsey was going to be joining us now uh, to, to send his greetings from the select board, uh, but he woke up this morning and was not feeling well. So, I'm guessing one thing John may have mentioned, that both of his parents were veterans. Uh, they're both buried in Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. Uh, his dad was a Marine, uh, but his mother was a sergeant. So we, 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 we know who wore the pants in that family, so she never, loved, never let the Marine forget it. Yeah. Now I welcome, the, again, the high school ensemble to perform America the Beautiful.
Thank you very much. I now welcome U.S. Army Specialist and Reading Deputy Police Chief David Clark. Deputy Chief Clark served with the Army's 984th Military Police Company from 1989 to 1992. He deployed to Panama in support of Operation Promote Liberty in 1990. Saudi Arabia and Iraq for, for support of Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm in 1990-1991. And finally to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba in support of Operation Safe Harbor. I doubt that the young Specialist Clark could have imagined that we would be involved in the same war 29 years later. Many of Redding's police officers and firefighters are veterans of this same conflict. Today, two of Deputy Chief Clark's officers are currently deployed in support of the same conflict he participated in many, many years ago. A veteran, a first responder, and a leader during this seemingly endless war. Deputy Chief Clark, thank you for being with us today. And, and uh, Dave Razor hasn't broken, but uh, the police department is taking part in the No Shave November. And this is in support of the, the home base organization. Who was, they do great work supporting veterans uh, suffering from the invisible wounds of war. So thanks to all the officers for taking part and raising funds for that great cause. Dave, welcome. Thank you, everyone. As uh, Kevin mentioned, you see a lot of the officers now walking around for the next month looking kind of scruffy. It's okay. Uh, we had set a goal to raise $3,000 for the home base program, and I'd like to say that as of today, we've uh, well succeeded that. We've raised well over $3,000 towards this uh, valuable program for veterans. So I just want to thank the uh, residents that also help support us on that, and uh, it's a very important cause. Thank you. I'd like to thank Kevin Paul Miller, a veteran service agent, for putting this together and for inviting me here today. I'd also like to thank my fellow veterans for your service to our great nation. I come from a long line of veterans. Even as a child, I knew somehow I wanted to serve my country. I always felt the desire and need to make a difference, be part of something greater. Joining the military was the best way for me to accomplish this. So in the summer, prior to my senior year in high school, I joined the Army. I left for basic training a few weeks after I graduated Reading High School. To serve in the military, you must be willing to sacrifice. Sacrifice time away from your family. Sacrifice sleep. Sacrifice decent living conditions. And for those who've been in the service know what I'm talking about, sacrifice good food. And if called upon, sacrifice your life. I was fortunate when I joined. I was not married. I did not have children. I can only imagine how tough it is to leave your spouse and children for an extended period of time. And let us not forget the sacrifices that those families make for our veterans to deploy overseas. My poor parents, on the other hand, I swear I aged them 10 plus years during my time in the service. Every time I learned I was getting deployed, I could not wait to call and tell them. I never understood why they were not as excited as I was that I was going overseas. But at 19, I didn't get it. Now that I'm older and wiser, and also a father now, I can only say, sorry, Mom and Dad. Today's veterans face a different kind of war that spans two generations. And most veterans today face multiple deployments to the same region and an enemy like we've never seen before. But even today, brave men and women continue to serve our country. We all of them are with thanks. As we speak today, two of our own Reading police officers are overseas protecting our nation. Let us take time today to honor all those who have served, those that continue to serve, and those that will serve in the future. I want to thank you for your time, your service, and your sacrifice. To those that have not served, I feel that we, as a nation of people who owe our rights and freedom to those that have fought to protect us all, must do everything we can to welcome our veterans home, thank them for their service, and provide our heroes with whatever they need to return to a normal life as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chief Clark. And I will invite Father Patrick Romano for a closing prayer, which will be followed by taps. Let us pray. 
Almighty Father, graciously turn your merciful gaze upon those men and women, especially those present here, who in their military service have sacrificed time, comfort, strength, help, and prosperity for the peace and safety of family and friends and others they have never known. Reward them a hundredfold for all their sacrifice and service. Bless them richly with all your many blessings. Watch over them always and draw each one closer to you. Grant them all the peace that surpasses all understanding and the love of Christ to rule in their hearts through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to thank everyone who has participated in today's ceremony. The Reading High School Band Ensemble, great job as always. Reading Police Department Honor Guard, Troop 702, who I couldn't do these ceremonies without, thank you so much. To the Reading Girl Scouts, again to the members of the Masonic Hall for their generous use of their, their hall for the breakfast this morning. To Jane Burns and all the volunteers who made the breakfast possible. Special thank you to our town manager, Mr. Robert Lelasher, and the Reading Select Board for all their support of veterans' causes throughout the year. And to all of you who came out to honor, and to all those who have served, and all those that continue to serve, thank you. And finally, please remember, every second of every day, there are sailors, soldiers, airmen, Marines, men and women protecting our way of life. Please say a prayer for them. God bless them and their families. Be well, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.